Hi everyone and welcome back to the uh, How to Get Garuda video. This is part 2, which I said I was going to make of course. And the reason why we're at the wiki is because I currently don't have the actual parts in my inventory because I have already built some of them. I already built the your optics and the chassis, or chassis however you'd pronounce it, and all I have left is the system. So I wanted to start off here so I can actually show you how to, um, uh, I can actually show you what you need to get them. Okay, so first off, some of the things you need are so plain and simple they don't even need to explain how to get them. Nanospores, uh, alloy plate, and pollen bundle. You just, you find these on different plants. This can be found in Venus and Uranus. This can be found on uh, Mercury and a bunch of other planets. And this in Saturn and Aries and some other planets. These three things are different type, types of, um... Ore and gems, you need to, uh, these are, these, no, not ore and gems, these are all three things, are all ore, that you need to, um, basically mine in the, in Orb Valis, and then refine it into whatever this stuff is called. The, uh, blue bars, the Vendroel, uh, yeah, I don't need to pronounce, so I'll say what it is. Then, the last thing you need is these three types of gems, and this one is a major pain in the ass because you actually need to get a really high reputation, in Old Valis, in fact, I don't even have Garuda yet because I currently, at the time of making this video anyway, don't have enough reputation to actually buy the blueprint to make this sort of thing. And then you also need these things, these torrids. And, uh, yeah, I'll explain how to get them soon. Also, you need Kuva. Kuva is a very late game resource. Um, I, make my, my, I might make a video on how to get Kuva, but it involves spoilers and it's past the war within and so far my video my videos have kind of been spoiler free but don't worry if I do make a video and talk about Kuva and what it actually is and how you get it in fact I probably will do that pretty soon because you need this to build Garuda and this guide wouldn't be complete without telling you how to actually build it um I will put like a spoiler tag on it and um like give you a nice um, big warning I was about to say juicy don't know why at the start of the video all right, so now that I have all the, like, I've explained uh, about what all the things you need, I'll explain how you get them, and let me put a cut in where I actually start a Warframe because I uh, can't show you on just the wiki. All right, so here we are after the cut, and we're back in Fortuna. This time, I've basically um turned off the transmissions because uh you've already heard what Yudiko sounds like and you don't need to hear her constantly blab and I'd rather honestly be able to talk over her. So after doing that Voxelaris mission which I did last time in part one where I got the Fortuna blueprint you will need to go to Yudiko and talk to her to actually get some standing by doing bounties to purchase your first things you will need to get Gruda. So to start off you just do the first bounty, and I'm going to uh, basically play through this here completely unedited and show you what you have to do in all of it because um, it, um, well, yeah, you'd want to know what to do when actually doing these bounties. Okay, so basically I'm reading what she's saying there in the corner, so she wants us to steal supplies here. Should be easy enough. Wouldn't be so easy for that mission there, kill stealth enemies, because uh, all my guns are loud. You don't have to read what she says there in the corner. It's a, uh, it's um, a bit of flavor text. You can read it if you want. All right. So first mission is again a lot like in the um. If you keep in mind these missions are all randomized, so they won't always be this mission. Like it won't always be this um stealth mission that I'm doing right now. Or something different. All right. So even though the corpus here have noticed me. I'm hoping that they haven't noticed me too much, so that I can just, yeah, smash my way into the, uh, roof there, which is the way you can get in here. And, of course, get down, and, uh, avoid- ooh, that, get, oh, come on! Nope, this is, uh, yes, fine, that was, that was the stupidest wonk in stealth ever! And apparently stupid is still undetected, oh, I love this game. Just me making grunting noises while I desperately try and get a alarm not triggered. Hey Unico, can you see how stealthy I am? Are you proud yet? Yeah, just the sheer force behind Corpus dying. Oh, this is great. 
derp, derp, derp. Uh, I don't know what you're doing while you sit. Oh yeah, um, the reason why they had blown up there is because um, I was whacking the coil drive. You can't actually destroy them here. They um, It's quite cool watching the explosion and they do give you a stealth enemy kill as you can tell. But they don't really give you anything else. Alright, so now that that's done, don't even need a bother to hang around here. You can alert all the alarms you want. You can like alert these cameras. Doesn't really matter. All you really need to do is get to the next point. So now you've, well, from doing the vo first Vox Solaris mission, you already know how to do that stealth mission properly, but I guess I, sh I did show you another way to get in there, and how if you have a potentially powerful enough melee weapon, you can kind of just hopelessly and ineptly swing at the um, scanning device while it doesn't see you and then blow it up. Okay, so this next mission is a K-Drive and, um, not K, Coil Drive ambush mission, where you try and get to the uh, place where they tell you to do go, and then, um... Set up an ambush for a coil drive, you see what I mean. So, you don't even have to clear out any of the enemies in the area, but I like to because they uh, it just really gives me peace of mind that they won't uh, destroy the coil drive. So, you go here, activate the trap, and then wait for the coil drive. At first, I generally walked behind a rock and like crouched because, oh well, you want to be sneaky. It's like an ambush, right? You want the coil drive not to see you. Nope, you don't even have to bother with that. You can be on the track. And like, let the coil drive come, and the drive is just going to be totally oblivious to you. In fact, watch this. Yeah, you can't even damage the coil drive, and right now he's getting shot at. Yet he, he still just he hits the thing. Like, if you, if you see a Tenno in front of you shooting, you really shouldn't do that. Okay, so once it's um disabled, you just hack it. If you fail it, I'm pretty sure you can just try it again. Oh, apparently I actually had damaged it with my shot, so it is a bit of a bad idea to actually shoot it with my gun. So yeah, don't do that. And then, you uh, have to defend it for the uh, amount of time it says there. And you get a nice bonus, which means bonus uh, resources, I think. Or at least if not, then a bit of bonus standing. If you make sure that you keep the coil drive alive with either 70% or more of its health left. Because that represents, and Utica will probably say so if I do that after this mission is complete, that um, her people are able to look inside its files a lot better because the wires and everything are shredded, fused up, and glued together in a hot mess because laser fire has ruined it. Well, laser fire and of course other stuff. Like, I'm pretty sure I have what seen one of these mowers try to grapple hook and kick the coil drive. So yeah, that happens well. Yeah, at this point, you really don't want to be, um, killing more enemies than you need to. Like, what I mean by that is that, um, that guy there, he was, like, trying to put up another one of those alert beacons. Feel free to just destroy all any of the alert beacons you come across in this section right here. Because your mission currently is protect the coil drive, and in fact, the less enemies there are, the better. I've sometimes had the game glitch a little bit, where the enemies just refuse to spawn in this mission, and it was lovely. I just played some smooth jazz in the background and waited as the uh, coil drive uh, hacking just completed. And the best thing is the enemy spawned the next part of the mission where I needed them to spawn, so the game basically bugged out in my favor. It was wonderful. Uh, yeah, it really shouldn't be too much longer now. I mean, two minutes can seem like a really long time when it's a higher level, but at this point you're kind of just sitting around waiting for all the enemies to come and everything. Yeah, at this point, I bet I could even just run over there and get that mod. It wouldn't even really matter. In fact, um, I'm pretty sure I haven't let a single bit of damage actually come to its health. Its shield's just still up, and even that's completely full. You're doing a really good job defending it here. This corpse aren't really standing a chance. What is that crewman doing? I guess that is a good way to dodge me, but he's not really getting his paycheck if he doesn't really shoot me. I mean, I bet he's paid here to come and shoot the Tenno, not run around in circles like sideways like it was. Yeah, sometimes the enemies will, like, stay up on the ridge like this, but you don't even have to really wa bother shooting them because they will come to you eventually, and especially if they're not sniper crewmen because then they can't even hit, hit, hit you. Okay, so, yeah, uh, this is actually uh, this is actually an uh, excellent way to show you that, uh, yeah, doing this first easiest mission is the way you get the Garuda chassis, and, or chassis, and uh, it's an uncommon drop, which means it, it doesn't drop as much as course, common stuff, but it's no way as rare as the rare thing, like this rare mod over here. Oh, neat. I got a Tetra mod. So if you're wondering what that mod does there, it's a weapon called the Tetra, which is actually what these corpus right here are using. And the Tetra 
is a rapid fire corpus laser gun, and that mod there allows its shots to bounce off the walls more. Why would you want that? You'd be thinking, like, why would you want that cheese? You might be asking. Well, it's because you can run inside really, really tight corridors, and then just spam the crap out of the te out of the tetra, and have all the bullets basically ping pong off the walls continuously, murdering everything inside. It's wonderful. I also have no idea why I haven't used the boost in this yet, because I really shouldn't be taking too long to get here. You wanted to see how to get Garuda, and you don't need at least need to see me doing tricks as sick as they might be uh, to get there. I'm also doing the decay drive instead of an arc wing to show you that you can pretty much get everywhere you want on, on, on Valus and decay drive. It's just going to be maybe a little bit slower. Or faster, maybe. Because I currently have my arc wing with the max amount of speed mods on it for its boost, so it zips around like a uh, lightning or something. Another analogy for a fast thing. Oh, yeah, uh, press a X. Uh, it's the same for using a, um, a an Xbox uh, 360 controller on the PC like I'm doing right now. I'm just using the PC. X is your um, get off key. And you can just use that to get off the K drive because um, sometimes you want to just dismount midair. Okay, so for this mission, uh, you want to clear out the enemies and stay right near these thing, these um, boxes right here because you're trying to capture them for your side. And if the enemies are too close, then this green like tether thing here won't come out of you and hit the box. And that's not happening. Uh, obviously, you have to kill the enemies because they are too close. You get a bonus here if you make sure that the enemies capture no boxes whatsoever, and you get to cap and you capture um, all the boxes you need. As you can see here, it does get a bit hectic and it is a bit difficult sometimes, even if the enemies are really low level because they just fly in here. A heat. Also, um, you actually it's actually in a, in a way easier to do this solo because when you are doing this solo. Less and like less boxes will spawn, and also of course in solo less enemies will spawn. So that's why doing some of these missions right here solo are actually is uh, sometimes easier. Also these guys right here, I hate them so much. They are so damn annoying. They um they do this jump move like you've seen before, and they also just plain old fly at you and it stuns you. My way, I might recommend way of dealing with them, shooting them. Guns do an excellent job of getting rid of them. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm shooting this thing here, is because sometimes these things can actually be turrets. And they're kind of hard to see sometimes. Yeah, if, you, um, if you're wondering why I'm not shooting any of these, uh... Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, submit, they're capturing one. Okay, I'm pretty sure I won't actually get the bonus here. Because they are... Uh, okay, maybe I might. It's just they're trying to capture these a lot. Oh, damn it! I wanted to reload and I got on my K-Drive. That's the bad thing about having the interact key also be the reload key. Yeah, so I got the bonus right here. And that was actually all you needed to do to complete this whole bounty. And then it will give you the extra reputation once you get back to see this. If you're wondering why I haven't shot these things yet, there's no real point doing it. They don't even drop anything. They're just construction drones. They're completely harmless. They don't actually hurt you. And they don't really do anything either. Oh, and uh... This thing here, it's a data pad that you can pick up and put in this thing here and then you have to defend it. It's like a communications relay, but I don't really find it that useful because what I thought originally happens is that when you put them in that thing over there, you basically take over a camp. It's like kind of taking like over a camp in um, Far Cry 5 or 3 or really, um, or for any of those Far Cries, but the thing about it is that it will revert back to Neff Annual's control after you have... Um, after you have finished the mission, so it's not even that it's like not even permanent, which I was hoping for. All right, so now this is done. It's time to head back to Fortuna, and you can just hold down the map button if you want, and that uh, displays the map. It's an excellent way to find Fortuna. Like right now, I can see that Fortuna is just right down here, and without doing that, I wouldn't actually um, know where Fortuna is that much. Even though I have been here a bunch, I uh, I still don't really know where it is all the time. Oh, and uh, you have a high enough level gun. Feel free to just shoot any corpus dropships to come across because it's uh it's quite fun and cathartic watching them just explode like that and imagining how confused all the corpus inside must be about their dropship just randomly dying. Not sure why I got uh no focus there. Focus is uh, as I said like an end game thing. You basically get it by getting experience from killing enemies. Oh and uh 
Another excellent way of getting some of the resources I'll be talking about soon to get Garuda is um, destroying these containers. Because sometimes, they, as you can see there, they have they sometimes just drop a whole bunch of things. In fact, that the bunch of things dropped there was uh, too big to even list. Like it, it also disappeared too quickly. But they can even drop the type of ore that you need. So you potentially sometimes don't even have to go mining to find the ore you need. Okay, so now that you've completed this mission, let's just say you've completed uh, one or two or three of these missions. Let's say you got around about um, 3,000 standing because I'm pretty sure that this mission I just did gives you... Um, oh, okay, so it's giving me 1,500 standing. So in that case, not even three times. Just doing this twice would probably get you uh, enough standing. Well, not necessarily. I'll explain what I mean right now. What I mean is that when you do the bounties, the bounty will be listed as completed once you do it. Which means that this big amount of standing, it says so right here, 1,200, won't, you won't actually get that. You only get the little bits of bounty you will get from doing the mission, like, for, uh, when, you, like in the, when you're in the middle of doing the mission. You won't get the big amount. So, uh, yeah, remember that. And, of course, the uh, big, tougher bounties get you, um, get you, uh, well, they're tougher, of course, but they get you more standing. Also... These three bounties are all you have to do to get all the Garuda parts. This one here, the second one, always gives you Garuda systems, and this one always gives you Garuda near optics. But if you're a new player, as you can see, this of course is easy to deal with, levels 55 to 15. But this is levels 10 to 30, and this levels 20 to 40. So you probably want to get uh, a bunch of other uh, veterans along to help you, because otherwise the corpus is going to murder you really quickly. Okay, so now that you know how to get the... Uh, Garuda parts. I might a little bit later in the, in this video uh, show you how to do some of the tougher missions because they come with different mission objectives and just show you how tough it is. But yeah, um, after you've done that, you want to come over here and talk to I forget what his name actually is. Ah, oh, Smokefinger. Yeah, and you want to talk to Smokefinger and buy this thing right here, the Sunpoint Plasma Drill. This is really, really awesome because it can mine every single mineral in Cetus. So remember in my, one of my previous videos about how to get platinum? I said buy the 20,000 um, standing drill. Don't actually. Just come to Or Valis instead, or Fortuna, and buy this instead because it is so, so much better at, at, my, at mining stuff for even less reputation. This is hardly any reputation compared to 20,000. It's just great. So you needed to get this and then go gem mining. You also need to get this type of alloy, this type of alloy, this type of alloy, and these three gems. This one I actually can't get yet because you need to reach the rank of Cove, and I'm currently not at Cove. So, once you buy the blueprint, you will need salvage for this, plastics for this. They're pretty easy to get, and of course the ore and a bit of... um. And a bit of credits. Same for this. It's just the orbit of Rubido and Ferrite, which is really easy to get. And then this as well, which uh, is a bit of gallium and stuff. That's all really easy to get. And then for these three things, all you need is the gem itself and credits. That's it. Nothing. You need nothing else. So just make sure you rank up your Solaris reputation, get to the next rank, and uh, buy these things. Okay. So now that I've explained how to get gems. Since you will need gems for Garuda, I'm going to show you how to actually mine because it's good to have a little bit of a, well, um, a refresher on it in case you forgot to, in case you forgot about how to mine from my previous video, or you haven't watched my previous video about how to mine, one of my previous videos, how to mine um, gems in Cetus. If you have already seen that, you can pretty much skip this part of the video. I might put a timestamp in if I figure out how to actually use timestamps for once, or if not, just skip ahead a little bit. So for now, I'm just going to go and uh, mine. Get out my mining tool. Reason why I just came right outside immediately equipped it is because you can generally find minerals right outside here. And uh, I'll explain how mining works. So you aim at the blue spot, hold down the fire button, and then try and get the... And then release when it goes inside this circle thing. At some points, there may be much, much smaller... Like, uh, not circle, but squares. There may be much, much smaller squares that are much harder to get. And uh, if you get them, you can generally get a, a, a granted a chance of getting gems in ore. What I mean by this is each red um, l um, vein like this will usually only give you ore unless there's one of these really small things in it. And the blue ones will usually give you gems. No, not usually. They always give you gems. The red ones always give you ore and have sometimes a chance of gems. And then the blue ones have sometimes 
have just always a chance to either gems or more gems. So it's just gems, gems, gems. You see, this is generally how you mine stuff. And for all the ore you need, like, period, you just need red and blue ore, which you find everywhere. You go around, you look for caves, you go around, you just, you find it on the floor like this. You just whip out your, um, mining drill whenever you think there's ore nearby, even when you don't. And you just try and, um, do, uh, uh, the best mine possible. But, um, one thing to remember is that... Sometimes it's best off not to go for those uh, really like those those really um those really small tiny like hotspot locations for when mining stuff. Sometimes you want to just go for the big ones if there is a smaller one because it's sometimes not worth it to get the smaller one because it, uh, it can be really hard to line it up. And if you're new at mining, you may not be that good at it. Also, if the um if the little blue parts you meant to zap don't show up immediately when you're looking at the ore like I was before, just walk away and then come back. Alright, so that's pretty much how to mine for the gems you need. In fact, while I'm out here, I might as well show you the next part. So, the next part, as I was saying, uh, well not really as I was saying, but the next thing, one of the next things you would need is torrids. Uh, different types of tor torrids. So you will need to go and um, uh, basically get the corpus angry. I'll show you what I mean. Because once you do get them angry, oh boy, do they um, do they try and start hunting you. And you will need to go to uh, three locations. I'll actually link a video from a YouTuber because he actually explains the, the three uh, locations pretty well. He's called Tactical Potato. I recommend subscribing to him. He provides great Warframe content. And yeah, he, he lists the three locations. But um, I'm mainly just going to show you here what actually happens when you get the corpus against you. Yeah, so I'm not really too fussed about that thing saying projectile incoming because it just shot me out of my arc wing and I actually want to be on the ground. Yeah, these are the kind of turrets I was talking about before. You have turrets that can stun you and all kinds of other stuff. So right now here, I'm actually on pur purposefully not shooting this reinforcement beacon here because I want the corpus to come. Damn, this guy's annoying. Yeah, so uh, as you can see there, from about level 20 corpus, I almost died and I'm level 30. So uh, try this with a bunch of friends if you, or like randoms if you can't, or just, what I'm saying is, Get people on your side if you can't, uh, if you find yourself dying a lot, because this is kind of hard for a new player to just willy nilly go in here and do. Oh, and um, while fighting all the enemies, make sure you shoot these auto turrets here, and of course the other turrets like these ones that are around, because they can do all kinds of stuff that will just pin you down. Like the big blast from this turret will disorientate you a little bit. Yeah, I might put some. Uh, uh, heavy thumping techno in the background uh, um, if I feel like it because that is really suiting this at this point I mean what I mean by that is like this can get so so hectic eventually and you will need it to get hectic because you need uh, a lot of enemies to spawn and the alert level to get really high for it to actually start spawning the uh, like for it to actually start dropping all the turrets yeah um, uh, as also as you can see the containers there are a somewhat good way to get more energy and stuff Yeah, so uh, even with around like over a thousand armor like I have right now, I'm still getting a, my ass kicked a lot by these enemies. Yeah, those there are the uh, really nimble jackals I was talking about before. Oh, wait, wait, not jackals, I mean hyenas. That's actually a jackal, which I find pretty funny because in uh, some mission, in, in one of the missions, like, um, about, like, wait, in fact, in my How to Get Rhino video, I meant, that's what I was trying to talk about. Yeah, then my How to Get Rhino video. I talked about how the Lotus sends you off to destroy a corpus prototype, which is the Jackal, and obviously that was unsuccessful, because as you can see right here, you are currently versing one. And it is very much alive, it is not dead, so they were able to actually get the plans for the prototype. And apparently they got the prototype for the Raptor as well, another corpus boss, and then for the Hyenas as well, another corpus boss, so that's like three corpus bosses. In fact, actually, I think five counted. Yeah, five, because the hyenas, there's three of them. But you try to destroy 
while playing Warframe, and it just it didn't matter, which is a kind of uh, in a way it's disappointing, but in a way it's not because it's cool and fun fighting these. And who knows, perhaps in the future we may actually be able to fight alongside a jackal at some point because that'd be awesome. Because this update already allows you to have your own Mo companions. Yes, you can have your own Mo now. It's awesome. Which I guess I will be making a video on how to get your own Moa as well. Yeah, so even though no turrets have spawned so far, just trust me when I say they do. Another awesome way, uh, way to get the turrets is um, bring Necros, because Necros uh, and use Necros as desecrate to make sure that more enemy um, stuff drops. Also, resource drop chance boosters, and our uh, resource boosters will work wonders because they will make it when you play, uh, they will make it um, that when you for one of them, the red, yellow ones or orange ones will make it that when you pick up one torrid, it counts as two, and then the other ones will make them just, I think, drop more. Don't uh, quote me on that. I don't know how the blue ones work that well, but I definitely know how the orange ones work. Yeah, when everything starts becoming really high level, generally don't bother when it comes to shooting down the coil drives because they will just drive off eventually anyway. Oh, and the uh, great thing about the Jackals here is that they uh, don't have an invincibility phase. Not really invincibility phase, but you don't have to shoot their legs and then shoot them again. You can just shoot them anywhere, although generally the head's the best idea because you will be getting headshots and the Jackals will die. Yeah, so this is pretty much what you can expect right now. Uh, pretty much what you can expect when dealing with the Corpus and getting your level really high. It's pretty much this, it just gets harder and tougher as you go on and the enemies will keep on getting a higher level slowly bit by bit by bit by bit. Which means that you might want to uh, get your level down to zero, refresh it kinda, and then come back here later. Or just head inside Fortuna which will also reset your alert level and then come back here later because sometimes the enemies can be just far too strong. Even for like... Uh, end game stuff. In fact, the uh, stuff I have here, I wouldn't even exactly put it end game. And what do you know? I've actually not even needed to put a cut in here because it's all escalated quite nicely. Yeah, if you um aren't just aren't getting the corpus to spawn, make sure you aren't having area effect weapons. Like one of my weapons, the Vapor Heck, will after I've got enough experience from killing enemies, it will make a uh, explosion happen with, uh, around me, which will destroy. The, um, which will destroy the beacons that are meant to pull down more corpus, which you don't actually want. Yeah, so now that I've finished pretty much dealing with the corpus and showing you how you basically defend yourself against the kind of high alert level, it's time to get out of here and get in my arc wing so I can um, show you, uh, so I can show you the other locations where you find it because I'm pretty sure only the uh, orange kind of torrid will spawn here. Alright, just flying away, and they should not be able to catch me now, even if they launch a missile at me. Alright, so now I'm actually in the maps flying. I can show you. Okay, so the Temple of Fabrication is where some of them spawn. Then, I know the spaceport's another place. I'm pretty sure they spawn the green ones. The yellow ones are at the Temple of Profit, and the orange ones are at the Temple of Fabrication. There are a few more places where they spawn, but those are just the general places, which you can go to. Oh, and uh, also, if you, as you can see right now, in the top left corner of my screen, the alert level hasn't actually gone down. So if I actually went to another place, the alert level would still be alert level 3. Yeah, so that can be an excellent way to keep up your alert level if you want to farm the turrets. In fact, I'm pretty sure even now, yeah, they still are trying to spawn Corpus and trying to hunt me down. Oh, oh, I thought this was Fortuna. No, I went back to the arrangement labs. My mistake. I mean, yeah, I did actually go back there. I wasn't there before. Alright, so that now you know how to get the torrids. Oh, and uh, also you can turn in the torrids for standing for this one lady, but um, that includes uh, spoiler stuff again. Got to do with stuff past the wall within, so I just uh, I won't cover that just yet. Trust me, we'll get to the stuff soon, though. Okay, so now that you know how to get the torrids, you of course will need to rank up your Sol Solaris United standing. How you do that is you give them different bunches of debt bombs, 
each time. And then you also have to give them credits and, of course, make your reputation get to the max, which can be kind of hard to do because your reputation is tied to your mastery rank. For example, I am currently mastery rank 20, so my maximum reputation I can get each day is 20,000. So this is like over the course, I have to do this over the course at three days minimum to get the maximum reputation here and advance to the next title. So, what I'm going to talk about now is uh, best ways to get reputation. Really best ways is bounties and go mining for gems and then trade in the gems. Just remember to not trade in the gems that you actually, like too many of the gems you actually need for Garuda. Otherwise, well, you're fresh out of gems and fresh out of luck. So, to trade in the gems, you just go back to Smokefinger, click trade gems for standing. Oh, and if you have a resource boost of the orange one for any amount of time, Go gem mining because you get double as many gems. That's how I managed to get 21 fists here. So yeah, you can see what all the gems are worth. In my opinion, you get tons and tons of these glob lights. So I'm just gonna like, as you can see, turn in a few of them for standing here. I'd say turn in mostly these and these because uh, this, 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 and uh, I think yeah, th these three, these three are all you really need for um Garuda. So make sure you don't give away too many of them. And these are, but these two are, these three are needed for other stuff. Which so make sure. Keep a little, a little bit of them for yourself. Alright, so now that I explained how to gain Solar standing, the two best ways, I'm also going to explain how exactly you um, get debt bonds. So you jump up here and talk to this guy here, Ticker. And Ticker allows you to purchase debt bonds. What you're doing basically here is you're paying off someone's debt so they're no longer in debt and whatever it says here that won't happen to them. So for example, brain shelving, what I said before, they take out the brain and use it for a bit of processing power and then give it back to you way later, which I don't know may give you like mental problems because your brain is gone for a while. They won't do that. This guy is like free of debt and he can even leave Solaris if he wants. Then, um, same here, organ repossessions, so they take some of these organs that won't happen to them. And then also, uh, 60 days hard labor and all valus, like this one's uh, very easy to pay off um, with credits anyway, it won't happen to them. But you also need to get a bunch of um, things sometimes with these people. Like for example, this one needs spores, which um, I will actually, I might as well show you how to get spores in a few minutes as well. So yeah, for that you need spores, that you need rotor blades, which you actually will have to go fishing for. And then uh, some others you need like um, gems and stuff. All right, so since I was talking about that, I might immediately cover how to, well, I guess, moving on from that, go fishing. So, to go fishing, you talk to Biz or the business. Again, browse his wares, get at least the rank 1, and get the Shock Prods Fishing Spear. You can, of course, get the Stunner Fishing Spear, which I have, which is better. We're just going to be using the Shock Prods Fishing Spear. So, for example, with one of those things, you said you needed a Mon Battery. So I'm just going to fast travel to Utico and then so I can quickly get out into the open world and show you where you find these. I figured out a really easy way to find them. And really quick. Just waiting for this to load now and then it should be at the service any moment now. Okay, so, to get these fish, you need to get them from ponds and lakes. And just right over here is one of the best fishing spots ever, in my opinion. Hold on. I need the corpus to not interrupt my fishing. That'd be terrible. Can't have them scaring away with a robo-fish. Oh, and you'll soon see what I, why I said robo-fish. Okay, so, reason why this spot is so good. It is because, and let me just get out my spear here. You need to fish in either a pond or a lake. This place, I'm pretty sure, counts as a pond. That place, I'm pretty sure, counts as a lake. Right over here. So, you can see why I love this fishing spot so damn much. Lake, pond, right next to each other. The only bad thing is since this is kind of flowing, the fish will be going downhill, so you kind of have to time your um, actions well. Also, some of the fish you need to get, you need to make sure that, uh, hold on, let me just get my mouse out here, that this is warm. So some of the fish you need to collect when it's warm, and some of them you will need to collect when it's fr uh, when it's cold. Some of the warm fish will spawn in here, and some will spawn in there. Now, I just need to show you how to go fishing. So, 
I have some um, luminous dye here. I've built it. It's not. It's quite easy to build. All you need to do is get some radiate, which are like this. Uh, they are these certain type of um, what shall we call it? That you can get in the plains of Eidolon, like some kind of ore or something or mineral, and you just use a bit of uh, ferrite and five, 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 no, five thousand credits. Yeah, that's it. To get it, and then you just toss it in the water, and it will make this robo fish glow. Now it's just a matter of finding a robo fish. They don't always spawn right away, but they should should spawn soon enough. They don't spawn. I put a cut in when I find. Okay, so here this is one. Here's one a tank. So you throw your spear in, hit it, and then press the fire button again, which is of course to fire the spear. Okay, that was really weird. I got it, but okay, this is just wonky. I should have caught that fish because what you meant to do is you meant to throw your spear, hit it. And then when that bar reaches the red spot, it, you press a fire, the fire button again to shoot off a static charge and then catch the fish. But for some reason, this seems to be Mr. Invincible Fish here who doesn't want to play by the rules. He just sits there and can't be caught. Yeah, so that uh, actually pretty much covers it when fishing except for baits. Uh, in this case... Baits work like normal, like for example, this is a broad spectrum bait which attracts all the basic solo fish which actually, will, which actually will throw in because the solo fish aren't spawning enough for my liking. Also checking another one of these because I don't know where the other one went. Yeah, and then generally wait for the fish to spawn. And um, the, how you get the bait is unlike uh, the sea, all the seeders bait which requires different fish parts. So you need to fish the first kind of fish, then the next kind of fish, then the next, then the next. You just can purchase the bait off the business for standing. It all just costs standing per individual piece of bait, which means you want to not purchase any bait at all if you want to get your standing up really, really fast. Yeah, so no more fish are spawning. I don't know why. Maybe the game is a little bit bugged right now. Maybe you should come back later. But trust me, they do spawn. But I do want to get over here so I can show you why the other type of fishing spear is just so much better. I'll just throw in both my baits so the fish actually spawn. Alright, so now... Just going into spears and equipping the Stunner's Fishing Spear, which is in every way better than the other one. Now I just have to wait for some fish. Oh, okay. Fish aren't spawning, so let me just put a cut in when one eventually does spawn. Okay. So here we are, the fish has spawned. It's a scap daddy. So Okay, this might be time to actually submit a bug report. This should not be happening. Every time I'm actually throwing my spear in and doing that correctly, it should actually be catching me a fish, but it's not. This is entirely bugged. This has never ever happened to me before. Yeah, as you can see, it just throws me off when I immediately catch it. So uh in fact, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna cut this part of the video up in my editing program and, and send that off to TE because, um, yeah, what a bug report that is. But trust me when I say this fishing spear is better because when you throw it and you successfully catch the fish, it will emit a electric shockwave disabling other nearby fish in the area, which is an excellent thing because unlike the fish in um, Cetus and around there in the uh, plains of Eidolon, you can't actually throw in any bait that makes them calmer. Okay, maybe you can, but either way, stunning fish when you fish another fish next to it, and basically being able to train, um, not, um, not train, chain fish, um, uh, well, train, like, um, while well, throwing your spirit fish is a great way to, well, get more fish. Alright, oh, wait, wait, wait. Why did I, why did I, um, why did I go back here? I should actually be staying out here because I need to show you how to get the spores. Yeah, so you, uh, there are three way, main ways of getting spores. One of the ways of getting spores is destroying one of the crates that I found around here, just around um, the entrance, and uh, you generally find them in other places. I guess there are no crates right now when I actually want to show you them. It's a bit of a shame. Yeah, there are none. But generally, the crates will spawn the spores. The other great way to get the spore is actually going up to the spawn pile itself and just this thing and just uh, hitting it. It will pop and you get a certain type of spore. 
I'm not sure exactly what makes you get. There's like two types of spores you can get. There's this type, and then there's some kind of other type. Just pop as many of these spore things as you can get, and you will generally get them. And another excellent way of finding the spores is uh, looking up at these mushrooms. They'll sometimes be hanging in these uh, spore sacks there, and, and then you just shoot it, and it will fall down, hit the ground, and burst, and you'll be able to get the spore. And of course, the corpses will usually try and interrupt you when they do when you do this. They nearly always do whenever you go out into the, the, the snow here. Just uh, kill them if you want, because, it, like I said before, it is an excellent way to get mods. Alright, so now you know... Oh, here's one of the crates, actually, I was talking about. Yeah, I got heaps of stuff there. And as you can see, I actually got a rotor blade. So if you smash enough of those crates, you actually won't need to take back the um, fish that the business wants and um, chop them up for the parts you need for Garuda. Yeah, and uh, it's really simple how you just chop them up. You just, you just go to Biz or the business, then select it, select one of his options from um, the menus, which is called, like, just, just instead of cut up fish, dismantle servo fish. And then you select one of your fish, and, and then uh, I'm not sure why the fish actually aren't displaying. Oh, that's why they're displaying. It was taking a little while to load. You know why my game's suddenly all slow. Yeah, so then you select one of the um, fish, and... Um, you will uh, give it to him. Instead of uh, large and small and uh, medium sized fish, it goes basic for B, then um, I think it's uh, A for Adorn, that's like basically, so this is basic, this is small, Adorn is medium, and then uh, Magnificent I think is uh, big. So if you want to get the most standing, give him all your basic fish and don't give him the others. I'm not sure if it actually increases this size, and uh, even though size isn't important for standing, you might want to, size might be important if you can put them in your fish tank. Because yes, you can put the robo fish inside your fish tank alongside the regular fish from the Plains of Eidolon. It looks stupid as hell, and I love it. Okay, so. Besides all I've talked about before, including getting the debt bonds, one of the other ways, other than... Um, giving uh, Ticker money and stuff to pay off people's debts, which you, which you get debt bonds, is actually the bounties. Because some of these bounties here can actually give you debt bonds. Again, I said I'm not sure why my game is suddenly freezing so much. I guess it's just like bad latency in the server or something. Yeah, and um, so this almost covers it for this tutorial video on how to get Garuda. I'm just going to fully complete this mission, the Courier Ambush. So you can see generally what it's like and how uh, prepared you need to be for facing a bunch of uh, high level enemies alone. And uh, sometimes some of these missions will give you debt bonds as well, but it's generally a small amount. You can of course also trade debt bonds with Ticker in for Solaris Standing, but I wouldn't unless you know that you don't need any of those debt bonds for anything else. I generally wouldn't trade them in at all unless you really know that you don't need the debt bonds for anything. Okay, so first thing Utico is telling us to do here is, um... Well, find some kind of camp, obviously. When it says Salah's camp, I'm not sure what that means, the camp of Nefanyu's men, or, um... Oh, yeah. Uh, this mission... Sometimes I've actually had this glitch, it's probably patched by now, but these people you have to investigate, uh, like I did previously in the, um, Vox Solaris quest, they sometimes may not actually be around the area. Yeah, and as you can see from selecting a high level mission, and it's pretty should be pretty obvious, but the corpuses at this point are no longer level five. They're already at a much higher level. Oh, and uh, one of the great things about anything you do out here, same with the Plains of Eidolon, is that if you partially complete a mission, uh, let's say you're partially completing this, and then you failed on the last stage. It will still count as a um, mission complete. Uh, I mean, it won't count you as mission complete. What I mean to say, what I should have actually been saying is, it will count the previous stages as mission complete. So let's say you got up to stage three, you keep all the rewards and resources that you got from stage three, as long as you don't die four times. So what I'm saying is, if you fail the mission from something other than you dying four times, and you don't get sent back to uh, Fortuna. 
you can just go back to Fortuna yourself and you'll still keep the reward, which I love. Because the fa it has failed a few times, not due to me failing actually, but due to bugs, which was really, really frustrating. Yeah, so what it, right here, I know it looked like that the, uh, the the guards here were trying to shoot the people in there, but that actually wasn't happening. What happened was I um I uh, put radiation to one of the enemies because one of my weapons does radiation damage, and radiation damage makes it so that enemies will start fighting each other. So he's actually shooting another guy or a turret in here, which why which is why it looked like he was um attacking these dudes. So yeah, like I said before in my um video about how to do the Voxelaris quest. You will want to stay in here and just generally poke your head out occasionally if the enemies are really strong and basically can't. In fact, that's what I want to do here because I frankly don't feel like going out there and making a big fuss. I just want to wait in here until the hack completes. Oh, screw it. This is boring. Might as well go out there and make a fuss, like I said. Oh, uh, okay, so apparently you actually do want to kill these dudes and get their keys because um, if you kill three of them, you get a bonus to your reputation, your standing. If you pick up three keys. And if you don't have a really powerful gun like I have right now, it may be actually a little bit hard to kill, kill these dudes like within the time limit because the hack is actually going up quite quickly. Utico is apparently some kind of master hacker. Also, what can happen sometimes is that these enemies here just will refuse to spawn to come out of their dropships. So they just want to stay in there and stay cozy. Another thing I've also had happen sometimes is that the enemies will just stay up in the air for some odd reason. Uh, I don't know why. It's another quite actually funny bug if you see it happening. And this is another mode where you really want to destroy the beacons because you don't want to have the entire, like, all of, um, all of, uh, Venus, all of the Venus corpus against you all at one time. Because as you can see, like, as I already said before, I'm, like, around, like, level 30. No, not, not around level 30. All of my stuff is level 30, and I'm already having trouble with this. Should be done any minute now. Oh, and then, as I was saying, I actually got some medical debt bombs. Yeah, and as you can see, if you don't have much survivability in this type of mission, you will actually die. Because these corpses are doing a huge amount of damage, and you know, you keep activating hysteria to uh, kill them. If you don't know what that does, basically it's uh, Valkyrie's fourth ability. She goes into a rage and starts whacking. And as you whack enemies, you will um as you as you whack enemies, you will gain um as you kill enemies, you will gain health. The uh, reason why I'm st uh, stopping and stuttering so much is because I'm actually wondering why no corpus are spawning. And that's probably because I actually need to get to an area with some more corpus in it. Because, yeah, the current mission is just, uh, kill a bunch of enemies. So this is actually one of the points where you will want the enemies alerted. And you will want the beacons active. Because without that, the corpus may not, um, actually spawn enough. So that's why I'm actually trying to leave some of these... Yeah, I'm trying to leave the guys alive until one of them finally drops one of those. And then once that's done, I can actually get to killing them. Because, um... You want to make sure one of those is there, because if you don't, you actually kill, uh, and if you kill them all, then the alert level will just drop right to zero, which is not what actually what you want this time, because you want the enemies to just be coming at you like mad. Yeah, the corpus here also like to group up in bunches quite a lot of times, so either bring in a weapon with a lot of punch through, like this weapon here, the Zen, it's, it's um, you get it from like logging in a lot of days. I'm pretty sure there's actually like a 300 logging day reward. So yes, I have uh, logged in for almost about a year now to get this thing. Oh, 
and I'm dead. And uh, one of its uh, abilities is you use its alt fire, and then it will place these yellow things above all the enemies on the map. Well, not all the enemies, but like all the enemies you can basically see. And it also grants you, like, its alt fire actually changes its fire mode from a rapid fire machine gun to the sing a really high damaging single shot. And when it's in that mode, it also allows you, to, it has infinite punch through, so you can basically wall hack and go through walls with this weapon, why I love it. Yeah, that's one of the bad things about uh, sometimes doing these missions. This is like a level 3 mission, so the enemies are like level 40, yet it still gave me only Rubico, or uh, not Rubico, Rubido. Rubico is actually a weapon. Oh, this mission, I'm kind of glad it popped up because it's one of the um, more difficult ones. How to find Corpus Caches. So, for this one, you actually want the alert level off you. Yes, I know, it can get really frustrating. Oh, this mission, you want it on you. This mission, you want it on you. On, off, on, off, on, off, wax on, wax off, that kind of thing. Props to you if you get that reference, by the way. Yeah, so this mission, you want to lower the uh, uh, low alert level as possible because. You're trying to find the corpus caches, and you don't really want anyone to annoy you. Oh, 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 this place. So they are most likely actually going to be inside, which can be one of the most annoying things ever, especially if one spawns in the uh, place I once found it, which I like to call the secret little hidden shit place, because uh, I call and I call it that because whoever would ever expect you to find it there, and I'll show you what I mean if it's there, or even if it's not. I'll just go to that place and unlock it for you so you know where to find it on your own. It's frankly, in my opinion, unfair what they actually expect you to do to go through to find this thing. Especially when you're being placed on a timer, which you most likely are, because most of these missions, like when it comes to finding caches, are time. Yep, it's timed. Okay, so for this type of mission, bring out your scanner, and perhaps, uh, also, uh, well, I was going to say perhaps lower your other sound volumes, which actually that would be a good idea. So, if you really, really want to find these caches, lower everything except the actual just sound volume. Lower your transmissions volume, lower everything else, lower the speech volume of the corpus, so you can't hear them continuously talk, and try and kill all the corpus C to keep things quiet, because the caches... They have this, yeah, the audible ping. They have a sonar-like ping. Let's see what you want to be looking for. And you will get the bonus at this point if you complete it within the time limit. It shows there, like, within five, if you complete it with five minutes still remaining. But in my opinion, honestly, this mission is hard enough, so don't stress yourself over it since you'll be stressing yourself enough to find these caches. Just if you complete it at all, I say pat yourself on the back. Oh, so another thing you also want to be um, keeping in mind when you're doing this is don't run outside the glowing circle area because the caches just plain up won't straight up won't be there if you go out of it. Which I forgot about and I was just wandering around randomly. Yeah, so you don't need to see me constantly run around this place. So I'm gonna put a cut in here until. I actually find the damn thing. Yeah, so back off of the cut, did not find it. Instead, I am heading off to um, an ambush point. Because this mission is apparently another one of these where you ambush a quality drive. The uh, reason why this thing is here is because I, deployed, instead of deploying my archwing, I deployed this ancient by mistake. But at least this thing, but uh, just so you know, you get these off uh, by basically either you, if you're with New Loka, you, get, you can buy them for um, 2,500 standing. Or if New Loka hates you, you kill the kill squad that they send after you and you get these as a blueprint. And the Ancients can actually be quite useful because they emit a healing pulse now and then and also are tanky. The higher level the enemies are, the higher level they will be. And I really actually should use them more often. 
I'm also not sure where those corpses came from. Maybe it was a dropship, but it seemed like they just came from nowhere. Usually they actually come from like one of these blue things or either boy, you already know a dropship or something like that. The great thing about uh even though the enemies are higher level, in my opinion, this coil drive mission is potentially easier to do than the earlier one because the coil drive just has so much more health. It's got 4,000 instead of just 1,000 shields. Which makes it much easier to have it stay with 70% um, health or more and then of course get the bonus from the mission. Also, even though I've said that uh, this can be an excellent way to get endo from the mods, this is not an excellent way to get credits. Because even though some missions do give you a kinda decent-ish amount, in my opinion you're even better off just doing the uh, level 1 excavation on Earth. Unless, of course, you're selling the mods, or the planning to sell all the mods you collect in this, then yes, it is a somewhat good way of getting credits. But again, I'd advise you to just, if you really want credits in your low level, just keep killing the sergeant over and over again on his node. He's the uh, really weak corpus boss that taunts you about being a coward and then runs away with his sniper rifle. Oh, and uh, since every enemy here is corpus and they all have shields, this is actually one of the um, few places you actually want a, uh, a magnetic loadout on your weapons, like I have in my pistols. In fact, I have these pistols set up, the first slot is actually always a magnetic loadout, so sometimes I have a magnetic loadout on when I don't even want to when I'm reversing infested, which is a terrible idea, because magnetic does like hardly any damage to them. But against corpus like this is actually great, because magnetic is great for getting through shields, and also dealing damage to robotics, and the corpus send a lot of robots at you. Oh, and uh, don't worry about the coil drive exploding. It always happens afterwards. Yeah, just, just wait a few minutes and it will. Yep, like I said. Oh! And apparently, uh, too much completing these missions is one of the ways to get... I guess the Tetra mod drops um, more than I thought it does. And apparently, and, from what I was, and the reason why I was being a little bit quiet before is I actually realized that the... Uh, coil drive was actually dropping it yeah so um that is uh pretty much actually it on how to get Garuda and now you know everything if anything seems a little bit too hard as I said ask someone in recruiting chat for help ask someone in your clan something like that or try and get some um, better mods or something like that but other than that yeah this is pretty much uh, the full video on how to get Garuda you now fully know how to get the Warframe how to get all the parts and everything there may, of course, be just a lot of debt, uh, really expensive debt bonds you may need to get when it comes to leveling up the next uh, the next rank of um, Solaris. Wait, actually, no, no, no. Why am I saying that? You don't need that. I know what you need because it shows me what you need for the next rank up. It's only a few like medical debt bonds and stuff like that. So yeah, this pretty much ends the video, ends part two. There won't be a part three because this is all you need to know. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this helpful, and um, I really hope you enjoy Garuda. If you want, I'll make a video on Garuda's abilities and how to use her. But if not then, for now, bye.